We asked Singhala Tamil and Muslim women across Sri Lanka to share their memories of the conflicts they faced. In the hope that history, constructed not by privileged historians, but by these community women who have experienced the pain, they trace their memories for us. These memories are what we take with us into the future. Valuable because they can help us remember, so there is no repetition of their pain. The hurt, the scars, the smiles through their tears, their hopes, their fears, we attempt to capture some of their stories so we know, so we remember. Violence was a daily occurrence in their lives. It didn't matter what community they came from. After being displaced multiple times before, in 1989, the terrorists in Manar threatened the villagers asking for food. Those who didn't provide food were abducted. We still don't know what happened to five of them. I also remember that the Muslims in the northern province were forced to relocate their homes to other parts of the country by the liberation tigers of Tamil Ilam. Their social, cultural and economic lives were severely affected by this displacement. In 1990, during the ethnic conflict, we carried sacks of dried chilies assuming they were sacks of rice for safekeeping. Some monuments built by the LTTE were also destroyed. Some of us escaped to India as refugees. There were many air attacks. We lost my sister during the attacks. She returned home three days later. I also remember the bombing of the bridge in Manar. I remember a woman carrying a cat thinking it was her baby girl. A respected person in Pandirippu mistakenly wore his wife's skirt thinking it was a sarong. From 1991 to 2006, the LTTE forcibly took children to fight as soldiers. Elephant Pass was attacked. In 2002, the A9 was reopened. People displaced in 1996 who were resettled among the Sinhala community were threatened. 2012 clashes between the Sinhala and Muslim communities in Colombo in October the menace of the Greece Yaka. It was a confusing time for those who experienced traumatic incidents. Along with the 30-year civil war, the violence inflicted by the JVP, Janatavi Mukti Peramuna, in the 1980s also comes to the minds of women. During the insurgency in 88-89, we had to spend our nights in the dark. Our childhood was spent amidst difficulties. Parents spent their days fearing that their kids would be taken away by anyone at any time. There was no vehicle movement in the streets. Couldn't shop for goods. Couldn't go to schools. Black flags were raised. In the 80s, several catastrophic events took place in many parts of Sri Lanka. Over a thousand youth were murdered and life was generally unsafe. The deplorable plight of Sinhalese, Tamils and Muslims in the border villages. While living in Trincomalee with my husband who was with the military, we had to face indescribable hardships. I cannot bear the pain of him leaving us. I still have his ring which he left with me saying, I am with you. Since we live on the border of a Tamil village called Soruvilla, our house was damaged due to frequent attacks by the LTTE. We moved to a village called Peminyavila under the 1972 Mahavali project. My husband wouldn't come to our house because he was having an affair with another woman. Due to starvation and disease, I couldn't breastfeed. I went to the police twice, but they told me to reconcile and go back because of the children. Men tried to harass me at my workplace. I am still unmarried. Due to this mental trauma, I had to quit my job and stay home. To forget the painful memories of war, to continue with life, is a difficult task. Many were the new challenges women faced. Those painful experiences are beyond expression. The happiness that I lost is much greater than the suffering I endured in life. All I need is affection. I need to be born again to live with the loved ones we lost. The past determines our present. We must recognize the painful past of these women. Recognizing their pain can help them to get justice, 
so they can move on. A shelter at the bus stop in remembrance of the children who died in the war. A lotus-shaped monument with names of women of all ethnic groups that were victims of violence. We need a library of feminism, recognition for families who are still looking for their loved ones. The fires of war may no longer be ablaze, but its embers still glow. Symbols of remembrance, a tree for every lost soul, memories of the trauma of war, pictures of public places, parks and buildings and electronics in remembrance, house of memories. Although some enjoy that space, there are others in our country who don't have the same opportunity. Sensitivity to the feelings of others, respecting the rights of others, diversity, these are still to be accepted. Some may feel that memorials renew the pain and horrors of war, but the women think these are symbols to remind us there are no winners in war. Hopes. To be unafraid to respond to memories of the war that appear on social media. Some women forget bad incidents which happened in their lives and add events that bring happiness into their lives. Remarrying and living as a family again brings happiness and economic prosperity. Meeting new people in society gives us the opportunity to lead a happy life. I derive happiness from my sister's children. There are still unaddressed issues even though the war was ended. The government should undertake initiatives that will stop the emergence of another war. Justice should be there for everyone and more attention should be given to war-affected women. Women feel happy and proud when they engage in treating everyone in the village with fairness and as equals, make children study well and leading them to reach higher levels, helping fellow women, engaging in work-related higher studies, raising voice against injustice, working along with women and children and creating friend circles. It is hard to find any person who has not been affected by war or any kind of a conflict. One can think, what's done is done. But the immeasurable suffering such a war can inflict is inconceivable. Sometimes the grief and suffering caused by war remains like a scar forever. Separation is a suffering that no one can bear. Memory is a treasure that everyone cherishes and cannot be erased by anyone. Our memories bring us together. Our memories must reconcile us. <laughs>